Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Chaitan. First of all, I really want to shout out to each and every one of you who watched our videos the last time. You guys showed us so much love. And based on that, even though we don't have time and it's almost 10 o'clock at where we are, we decided to do a second part because we really wanted to appreciate all the love that you guys gave us in the last video. So this here today is going to be a little snippet of an interview that I would do as a senior Scrum Master project manager for someone I'm hiring on my project. And we are going to mimic that. We are going to copy that and we are going to show it to you how it would go if we were conducting it in real life. Me personally, my name is Chaitan. I've been working as a senior Scrum Master project manager for a little over eight years. I currently work for a small startup and uh, I have worked for multi-billion trillion dollar companies uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. So I have a lot of experience in the field and uh, I'll, I'll let Naveed introduce himself and then we can get started. Chetan, thank you so much. And uh, what an honor to be here with you. Um, like you mentioned, um, I do have experience over close to nine years now and um, I work with a multiple uh, business uh, financial institution uh, worth of uh, multiple billion dollars of companies and um, it's it's such an honor to be here uh, Chetan because um, w through all these eight years of experience we learned so much we learned so much and sharing over here with the people who want to be a scrum master it will, I, I believe it will be a great video for them and I definitely recommend um, recommend them to watch it till the end awesome and guys before we get started, please like and subscribe the video, share it with your friends who want to get into the industry. Now, with those things said, let's get started. So Nubit, I will ask you questions. You ask me questions about my role, you know, what we do on a daily basis, how things work. And yeah, let's uh, let's give as much value to the people as we can. Absolutely. So Nubit, tell me, let's start, get started with the intros. Tell me a little bit about yourself and then I'll tell a little bit about myself. Well, um, I kind of introduced myself already, but I would be more than happy to introduce myself again. Um, so initially, I started as an intern as a, uh, for the one of the biggest financial uh, mortgage company in the United States. I worked there for one year and a half. And then from there, I went to one of the biggest financial institutions as a scrum master. I worked there for um, almost three and a half years where I was working in a safe environment, scale agile framework in a compliance department where I was managing two teams. From there, I moved to um, another financial institution. I don't want to say the names uh, for the privacy, uh, but um, I worked there for three and a half years as well. I was working at Scrum environment in a compliance department. What we were doing, we were getting this massive amount, amount of data from the one deposit department of the bank and another, the loan department of the bank. And then it would go to one of my uh, team. We would groom the data. And then from there, we'll go to my another team. We were basically, um, I'm sorry, we're, we categorized the data and then we would groom the data. We would put it in an AWS bucket and then we would test it out and we would send it to federal governments. So we were working in a compliance department. And I, did, I, I have done that for almost like a, um, three and a half years. Um, so from there, recently, I got a job in one of the biggest uh, um, uh, beverage uh, producer companies and I'm working there for almost uh, five months now. And I'm managing one team, a supply chain team, and love it there. So it is a startup company and um, it's completely different than what I used to do because it's new. They, they get, need to get to the new mindset of agile, you know. Um, so but it's great. I love it. Yes, of course. It's always fun when like you're working with teams and, you know, sometimes you think that, oh, everyone is agile. And then you step in a new environment and you see that people, a lot of teams, they are not that mature and you have to go in and you have to kind of build things from the scratch. Teach about ceremonies, sprint ceremonies, scrum ceremonies, teach about general practices in agile, teach about iterative model of development and how things are done that way. It's so amazing. And it, that 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 ramp up process, it's so much fun. You know, it's like it's all that we live for as scrum masters and all that we are passionate about, seeing the team coming together, having sustainability within the team where there's less turnover, where less employees are leaving, and seeing that growth of the team, like you mentioned. So that's amazing. Very good to know. That's great. Um, one thing really, really helps the mindset of the team. If they're open-minded, if they're accepting, yeah. it, it helps so much. As a scrum master, right? And I'm sure you experienced that as, as well, Chetan, that when the team is willing to learn, right? When they, is, when they are curious, like how to do this, how to do that, yes. it helps so much compared to the uh, in my previous job where you teach them or you train them. They say, well, no, I like their way better. 
Yeah. Everything is always wrong. You know what I mean? So then you have to come up with the reason and you have to kind of talk to them like, no, that why this way is better than that. And also kind of keep following up with them to make sure they're following the agile uh, ceremonies or agile principles, agile, agile way of working, you know? So definitely it's, if the team is open-minded, if they're willing to learn, it helps a lot. And also one more thing. Uh, one more thing here is that the team is open-minded. That's a blessing. If you have an open-minded team and they are willing to work with your Scrum Masters while you implement new practices and trying to make them mature, that's a blessing. The other thing is that the management, how do you sell the management? How do you get the management involved? The stakeholders, they are such an important part of this puzzle. This puzzle. It's like, how do you get them involved? How do you get them to see your vision, see your dream, see what you are trying to build for the team. And that is one important aspect of being a Scrum Master. So number one aspect of being a Scrum Master is, okay, you have to, you have to be, like Navid mentioned in the last video, you have to be a mentor for your team. You have to be a coach for your team. You have to help your team, build your team in a way where they understand the agile practices. The second aspect of Scrum Master, being a Scrum Master is, how do you coordinate things with the stakeholders, with the senior people, where they see what they what you are trying to build with the team and how you are trying to develop the team? Because a lot of times when you face reluctance in the team, if you don't have a buyout from the senior people, from the product owners or the stakeholders, you will not be able to influence the team heavily. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like a little bit of bureaucratic thing or whatever you want to call it. Because <laughs> sometimes people in the team they are seniors and they have you know, they have a network and they don't want to move and they don't want to do things the way they don't want, they want to stay in their ways and it's very hard to change their tracks. So you need a st certain type of buyout from the stakeholders or the senior people. They need to see your vision and they need to be able to help you out if things happen and there is a reluctance within their team members or things like that. You need to have that kind of, uh, that kind of people, uh, the stakeholders on the same page as you. So that's, that's very great. Now, let me introduce myself. So my name is Chaitan. I've been working in this industry for a little over eight years and uh, I have worked, uh, I started as a business analyst and I moved my way up to Scrum Master. I work for PayPal actually. And uh, uh, currently I'm working for a small startup. Uh, it's only six months old and uh, we are building the team. We built the team from scratch and currently the team is, I would say, uh, in the norming stages somewhere. The goal is to make the team as mature as possible. Uh, currently we have one team here and one team offshore. And uh, we're managing both teams and I work as a project owner. So but I work as a project manager. So my job is kind of facilitating the conversations, make sure there are no impediments, no dependencies that are left over and uh, whatever feature or whatever, uh, you know, things that we're trying to build, they're built and they're delivered on time. So that is what I do on a general basis. I also, one major part of my job is kind of handling the expectations of the stakeholders, make sure they are in constant communication and they have constant clarity of what we are doing, who is doing how much, how the capacity is being utilized. Because in the startup world, how things are is that the resources are not that, the resources are not that like ample. You know, you don't have billions of dollars to spend on the teams and just do whatever you want. Resources are kind of scarce, you know, sometimes, and especially in this environment. So resources are scarce. So, you know, you have to keep the stakeholders happy and happy, not in a bad way. You have to keep the stakeholders on the same page of what the capacity of the team is being used for, who is doing what and how much. Make sure that if someone is saying they are here 40 hours, they are working 40 hours. So those kind of things are kind of uh, play a big part in the startup world. It's kind of a different role than a multi-billion dollar company, but it's a learning experience. And, uh, you know, so that's what I'm doing right now. And it's been amazing for me. Uh, I have learned a lot being in this role. And uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Now, with that said, Navi, any question? Let's get started. Not question, actually. Uh, we will keep it as a discussion over here. And that's such a great video. And uh, thank you, Shannon, for give, taking initiative to create such a video because eight years and around nine years of experience, that's, a, that's a, so, many, so many years of experience that we can share with uh, our audience and our, uh, share our knowledge. So I want to thank you for that. Yes, yes, definitely. Now, tell me, give me an example. So we are we were on the stakeholder topic, right? How is the stakeholder relationship work with your team? Who are the stakeholders? How is it working out? How do you manage those? So what do we, let me tell you what do we do as a, uh, um, in our supply chain, we creating a dashboard for our, um, our stakeholders, our senior uh, leadership team, right? Um, our stakeholders are our 
uh, people in a warehouse or the people who the manager, there are our stakeholders, internal stakeholders, uh, uh, share, I mean, uh, stakeholders. Um, and that's, um, so the relationship is great. The relationship is great every uh, sprint review when we uh, uh, share what we have accomplished during the sprint, uh, during the sprint, great feedback, um, um, great feedback, good reaction, you know what I mean? They're very open-minded. They're always reaching out to us. Sometimes we invite them to our uh, kind of, uh, to some of our ceremonies to attend what we do, uh, kind of just get a better understanding of what our team is going through and what decision we do we make uh, throughout the sprint. So it will be better, it will give a better insight of, uh, to our stakeholders. Overall, the relationship is great. The people are awesome, like I said, they're still trying to learn the new way of working, you know, because they recently came to Agile. So they're still learning and um, it's great, man. It's great. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So how do you, uh, how do you show them the value? Let's say I am a stakeholder. I come to your ceremony. I come to the sprint demo and I understand the value of the sprint demo. You're trying to show me what you have done so far, what kind of dashboard you have built so far and so on. But how would you show me the value of, for example, our retrospective as a stakeholder? I would be like, hey, this team, we are paying this much money. They need to be working. What is this one and a half hour meeting? Why are you doing this? Let them work. Let them get back to work. How would you, how would you handle that? Um, I just want to make sure I understand the question. You say, okay. how can we show the value of retro to our stakeholders? Yeah, how can you show the value of a retrospective to your stakeholders if right. they if they have an objection against it? Right. For example, I mean, it's it's I keep it very simple, right? I keep it very simple. For example, you come when we have a communication. There's a, something that I want to share, but I don't want to share to you because you're my senior vice president of the company. If I tell you, perhaps I'm scared that you're gonna fire me or you have, you're gonna have a beef with me, and then we're gonna have a problem, right? The retro, how I conduct the retro is 100% anonymous. Nobody knows what they write. Nobody knows what they, so everybody is openly without any hesitation can share what they want to share, right? If I have a say, well, Chetan, you're such a great person or uh, I don't like the, you being wearing that red shirt. <laughs> you know, I can write that down instead of telling you and get offended right away. And you say, well, no, we, I don't like you anymore because you said you don't like my red shirt. If I put that, you don't know who wrote it, right? That's 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 give more um, come uh, basically giving uh, putting the team in a comfort zone so they can share and can speak their mind. And when the team can speak their mind and share what they want to share, that's where we can improve our team, right? That's where they can speak their mind and we can work on a team how we can improve it. Let's say if somebody make a comment uh, um, um, on, on our um, a product owner or senior vice president. They can do so without anyone noticing, right? without anyone feeling um, pressure or stress or saying, that, oh God, I'm going to get fired now. You know what I mean? That's the volume. That's how, and to be honest with you, Chetan, out of all these uh, scrum ceremonies, retro is my favorite. Uh, I believe I mentioned that in my previous videos as well. And that's because we, how you get better. We make a mistake as a human being. We make a mistake all the time. Sometimes we do things that we think is better, but when other person is saying that it, it, it might be different in other person's point of view. So when they're giving us feedback without their hesitation, without any problem, um, that's how we get better. And the, the whole point of retrospective is to make sure you're better every sprint. Make sure you learn from your previous sprint and learn those winnings or those learnings in the, to the next one till we completely become mature and we can run the sprint without any problem. So basically what you're saying is if a stakeholder comes to you and he has an objection that don't do the retrospective, you're taking too much capacity for the team. What you will say is, hey, we have to get better as people. If we don't retrospect, if we don't look, if let's say we did a sprint for two weeks and if we don't go after the two weeks and retrospect what we could have done better, how can we implement better things? It will improve our velocity long term. It will improve our team cohesiveness long term. We will be able to do more work because we will have less uh, problem. Uh, there is a famous saying, uh, a problem well defined is a problem half sold. So every team has problems, every team has challenges and retrospective is the place where you can solve them and the better you solve them, the more velocity and everything, you know, it comes out as a result of that. Absolutely. So fantastic, fantastic. Now, 
let me give you uh, so so this is this is what this is an interesting scenario, right? This is what happened with me in real life. <laughs> I'm not going to give any names here, but in my company, this is what happened to me in real life, right? So it's a startup, and uh, in one of the companies actually I used to work at, this is what happened. There was the team. The team was kind of in a silo. It was struck away from everything. It was an IT support team. And um, so they were basically doing tickets and the tickets would come in and they, that kind of thing. And so what the thing was that they were using hours, like hours, like little hours to kind of track their work done. That, so if a task would come in, how many hours they're taking to complete that task, which is not really a great way if you if you if you think of from the agile point of view we use story points we're you know grouped with story points and that's our way of tracking things and uh, the management and the product owner was kind of like so reluctant to in introduce story points for some reason or the other lack of resources or whatever you want to call it right and there was so much pushback and uh, so we did a small presentation and uh, you know so how how let me ask you this and then i'll give you my answer how would you handle so let's say you're working with the team, they're using arts, you want to implement story points because there's of course a better way of doing things because story points can you know, count in the complexity, the risk, the time, everything. They can count in the developer experience. So story point is a more holistic way of counting things as compared to ours. Ours are very uh, variable and vague. You are in a team, they're using ours, you want to implement story points, the management is against it, the product owner is against it. How would you go about it? Good question. <laughs> Never been in that situation, and um, definitely. Um, so, basically, in that situation, you create a pro and cons, right? What is the benefit? Ask the team why they like that, right? What is the benefit of the whatever they use at the current uh, time? And you come up with a kind of solution with uh, with the benefits of the story points. For me, in my team, in my past ex years of experience, and everywhere I went, I used story points and, and planning poker because it's so much easier. It brings so much ease to the team, and so it's there's no right and wrong answer for it, right? Right, like you said, it, we measure the best on the capacity. I mean, I'm sorry, the complexity and the risk and so on, right? So I would kind of create like a some sort of presentation or workshop to the team where you talk about them like, okay, this is the benefits of that that you are using right now. But look, we have a planning poker or story points that has a way more benefits and more, more advantages compared to that one, right? So this is the reason I want you to use story points. I know it might be difficult at the beginning. It might be hard, it might be confusing because the team, they don't like to get out of their comfort zone, right? Most of us. It will be hard. It will become, uh, uh, but as we go, as we learn, as we practice, it will can become easier. But another way that I like to do is confluence pitch. Write those things. Write the kind of stuff. How to do it? What are the benefits? What are the up and down parts of it? And kind of share the link with the team, or kind of go through in daily standard really quick to make sure they get they get it right. And we do it there for one week, and um, hopefully, and um, I, mean, I guess surely it will help uh, the team. Yes, that is a great answer. That is a great answer. So how I handled the situation was, so I I was basically uh, kind of, I went with the mindset of, okay, what is, so, so you have to think in this way. When the person is saying something to you, let's say a stakeholder is saying something to you, a pro owner is saying something to you, they have something in mind. They're not stupid, of course. You know, they're coming from a, they're coming from a certain, certain mindset. They are thinking of something, right? They want to deliver more business value in short amount of time. They want to do something, something, something. So you have to think from that person's point of view. Let's say if it's the management of the stakeholders, why are they pushing against it? Because they are scared that the implementation of story points against ours and explaining to the team and teaching them and kind of taking them through the hoops will take a lot out of capacity. That will kind of distract you from the goal of like the product delivery in a short amount of time, right? So they are coming from that mind. They were In my situation, they were coming from that mindset. So you have to think from the other person's point of view, why they are coming from a certain uh, certain place. Now, once you understand that, okay, now you have, to, you have to kind of develop your response in such a way where if you are mentioning to them that story points are better, they understand that story points are actually better in increasing the velocity of the team and getting the work in the sprint done faster, um, solidifying the definition of done, because this is, this is, this is how I approach it. This is what the benefits I told them. 
Okay, these are the benefits of story points. The benefits of story points are that when we are doing something in R, right? When we are tracking hours, we'll just go there. Okay, this is how many hours it took us and that's it. But when we are doing something in story points, it's a relative estimation. The whole team comes together. The senior developer, the tech lead, the people in the team, they are assigning story points to that same story. And if one person is saying three story, if one person is saying two story points, other person is saying eight story points, that's a whole lot of difference. And that opens the room for discussion. Now, once there is more discussion, there is more clarity. There will be a clear definition of done around the story. The work will be more precise and it will be getting done faster because the team understands everything better. Other thing is, if let's say some the team assigns eight story points to a certain story. Now, if it's eight story points, generally we don't take things that are more than five story points because if it's more than five story points, you break it down and you know chunk it down and then do the smaller chunks. So if it's eight story points that prompts the discussion, okay, why is it eight story points? Maybe we need to refine it further. And when you refine it further, there is more discussion, more discussion, more clarity, more clarity, more things will come up. The pro So you see the holistic picture is story points on a whole basis. They improve the development of the product. They improve the quality of the product. They improve the, 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 the speed at which the product will be developed. They improve the definition of done. They solidify the definition of done for every story. And there will be so much clarity, so much coherence within the team. So that is why having story points is so important because with ours, okay, if I'm doing a task, I can just say, okay, it took me seven hours. It took me seven hours. I walked on it. It took me seven hours done. But when I'm assigning story points to it, now I have to, now I'm proactive about it. it. Instead of just completing it and then putting seven hours and I'm done, I'm proactive about things. Okay. I have to refine this. Now, once I refine this, uh, this, then I will be able to kind of like see from a bigger picture. Okay, if I'm refining it, if I'm giving it two story points, why am I giving it two story points? What are the risks? What is the complexity? Can there be any dependencies that can come up? So having story points as a relative size of way of estimation of uh, stories is a proactive way of doing things. And it gives you a holistic view. These are the benefits. It gives you a holistic view because it gives you the complexity, the dependencies, the risks that might pop up while you're doing the work. The second thing it helps you is uh, with is uh, the definition of done. It helps you solidify the definition of done and make sure that there is clarity on what the team needs to do on every story. The third thing it needs it, it 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 does is the benefit is it removes any vagueness. It removes any vagueness within the team members that might be, uh, let's say one team member goes on a vacation and the other team member had to work on it because there was this refinement session. The other team member already knows what they discussed and what needs to be done. That is a very big benefit of it. So those are some of the ways that a story points helps in, in, a, in a very big way. Sorry, someone is messaging on Slack. So story, story points help me help help in a very big way uh, to, to, to kind of, you know, uh, help the team in in, 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 in uh, estimation. Great answer. Yep. Perfect. That's a great way. That's a yeah. really great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's discuss some other things. Now let's say, okay, what are the metrics you use? This was a very good, a very important question that came up. What are the metrics you use to track your team performance? First of all, before you go to the metrics, what are you using as a tool for project management? Okay. We use Jira. Okay, and you combine it Confluence or just? Jira, Confluence, yeah. And I, I mean, let, me, let me tell you, Chen, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, Jira is my favorite uh, Confluence. We document everything. So we, Jira and uh, uh, Confluence is like our Bible. So uh -huh. we, yeah, we do everything in Jira. We do everything in Confluence. So yeah, these are like two main and uh, personally, myself, I love it. Um, uh, I love using those uh, two. Yeah. What about I'm, you? I'm using, we are using ClickUp. How do you like that? To be honest, we love it, man. ClickUp is great. Yeah. It's, it's much better than Jira. It's much okay. easier and much better. Maybe, uh, maybe because I, I used to use Jira. Okay. I've used Jira extensively for almost six years. I've used Azure DevOps. I've used Jira. But man, uh, this ClickUp, I love it, man. Never used ClickUp before, so that's why I love Jira so far. If I use ClickUp, perhaps I'm gonna change my mind. But for now, love Jira, love uh, uh, Confluence, and um, 
for me, it's so much easier. It, the good best thing about it is yeah. you can customize it. You can customize your Jira board in a thousand ways, right? Mm -hmm. You can create a dashboard using uh, creating user story and then uh, link them to the epics and release and then label. You know what I mean? Then love it, man. It's our if you check our Jira board uh, is so it's so busy and so clear and so uh, so detailed. Um, yeah. So yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, maybe maybe down the line, if we keep continuing this, we will create a personal dashboard on Jira. Just just for our, our YouTube channel, we'll create a personal dashboard and we'll create a personal dashboard on ClickUp and we'll see which one is better. And we'll kind of show the people, hey, how do you, if you are a new Scrum Master, how do you create things? How do you create stories? Because as a new Scrum Master, those things can help help someone out a lot. Let me tell you, um, as a, most of the teams, most of the teams around the United States, or I should say around the globe, they use Jira. I think Jira is the number one software tool for the software management, right? Um, and uh, Confluence as well. And 90% of the, should I say 99% of the time, when you apply for the Scrum Master, most of the time they will be using Jira. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube that you can go and search for it. They have like a six hours of uh, tutorials and um I definitely recommend if you're applying for a Scrum Master, it's good. It's really good to have knowledge of Jira as well and the Confluence. It is not hard. It is easy. Don't stress. Uh, I mean, you might look very complicated at the beginning, but as you work on it, you will become so much easier. And also what you can do it to play, um, play around with it, you can create Jira uh, account for free. And it's actually up to free for up to 10 people. Yes. You can, you, your friends, actually, you can use it for the school project. Yeah. You can use it for your personal work. You can use it for your personal goals and play around with it. You can create a roadmaps. You can create a stories. You can create a subtask. You can create a uh, bugs. Love it, you know? So definitely, I recommend uh, 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 Jira board. And uh, Chetan, you uh, mentioned, I think that's a great idea. You create a dashboard in ClickUp. I'm going to create a dashboard in Jira. And then we can take about 10 minutes of each and explain how the dashboard looks like in Jira. And we'll love to learn about ClickUp. Like I said, I never used it and I would love to learn from you. Yeah, definitely. That sounds like an awesome idea. In fact, what we will do is, guys, uh, like, subscribe. What we will do is we will create a video showing you Jira tutorial right here. You don't need to go anywhere to learn Jira. We will show it right here. We will start the Jira board from scratch. We will create a sprint. We'll create a backlog. We'll create epics and all that. We'll show you everything, how it's done in a, in a data, data management company or whatever you call it, right? And we'll show you on ClickUp as well. So Jira and ClickUp and we'll create those dashboards. It'll be a longer video, but you'll learn a lot if you're a new Scrum Master. And I love that. I, I, and it, uh, I'm gonna, I, I will be showing Jira, but you're more than welcome to show ClickUp. I will be happy to learn from you, Chetan. Yes, because, yes. I guess I never use it. But to answer your question about the metrics, we use a uh, burn down chart, we use velocity. But however, like I mentioned, we are brand new. Uh, uh, we had just convert to uh, Agile, we, you know, we're not in that level where we can uh, know the actual uh, result of uh, the actual result of velocity. We are our velocity goes up and down. We still have so many users who get spilled over to the next sprint because um, still the team is getting used to uh, planning poker, right? Um, burn down chart goes up and down like a crazy, and that's because our team they're not used to updating their Jira board on daily basis. So what I need to do, I reach out to them on daily basis to like, hey, make sure you guys update your Jira board. We don't have a capacity planning. I have everything ready, but we are not doing that because we're not in that level. Uh, um, but in my previous jobs, in my previous, role, previous roles, I have used Velocity, I have used burn down Chart, which helps a lot with the team. And um, yeah, so these are, these are the two main metrics I were using for my uh, teams. Yeah, amazing. So yeah, so those are great metrics. And uh, you know, sprint burn down charts. And f first of all, let's talk about the velocity metric because velocity is like the most looked at metric in the in the in the thing. And guys, so the capacity planning that you're talking about is that the spreadsheet that I shared with you? 
Is that the one you're talking about? So yeah. guys, if you are a new Scrum Master and you're looking for a new spreadsheet for velocity planning, we will leave it somewhere here and we will charge a small fees. You guys can use it and own it and you just play, pay the small fees and you guys can own it and use it for your own teams for capacity planning and capacity tracking. And we'll show you how to use it in one of the later videos. It's simply a Google Doc, but we'll show you how to do it and it'll be a small fees, but you'll be able to use it. And now, I'll tell you guys, I'm using myself for my team. Um, I actually requested you, I like, can you send me that? I'm yeah. using myself, super helpful, super easy. It's very self-explanatory. I definitely recommend getting it. Um, definitely send a email or put in the comments. I'm sure Chazen will uh, look into it and it will send it to you a copy. Yeah, yeah. And when you are do, if you're a new Scrum Master, you're going for an interview and you show it to your people, hey, look, this is how I'm doing velocity tracking. They'll be really impressed because this is like the advanced level stuff for a senior Scrum Master. So, okay. So that is capacity track. So what I'm using as metrics for my team right now is I'm doing uh, velocity. I'm doing sprint burn down charts and uh, also... I'm doing bug with the help of testing team, of course, I'm doing bug defects. So what what so I'll start with velocity. Velocity is basically so we have had upward trends of velocity since the time I became a scrum master because there were a lot of weaknesses in the team that we were able to remove and kind of being on top of things. Hey, in the daily stand up asking people, hey, what are the impediments? Why is this not getting done? Why is this taking so much time here? Let's keep it moving and kind of helping the team with those impediments and kind of you know removing the dependencies and being active about uh, everything. So that is that is one part of it. Now the second part of it, the second thing that I'm using for my teams is uh, is uh, is a sprint burn down chart. So in ClickUp, the integration is with Tableau. So in Tableau, you have to create a dashboard and kind of track everything there. But in Jira, you can create simply a dashboard. Jira allows you to do that. It's a very simple dashboard that gives you a sprint burn down chart automatically. What a sprint burn down chart is that it will show you the progress of the sprint kind of in a linear slope. And it's never linear. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> it's never linear. It's never like this. <laughs> In my experience, my sprint burn down chart has never been linear. <laughs> Especially for me, because our team is, uh, um, like I said, like brand new, right? Sometimes we have a scoop creep. They are using to, to uh, uh, sprint and visually, sometimes they change the, what's called, the uh, story points. So yeah. a single story points changes, the burn down goes up and down. So what I do is... <laughs> I kind of, whenever that happens, I share with the team and I share with the person who are the user story or uh, kind of change the uh, story points. Like, hey, make sure you you don't do that because it will mess up the uh, burn down chart. But you're right, uh, Chad. Go ahead, please. Yeah. And you kind of have to constantly educate the team on that. Hey, the sprint burn down chart, it should, it should like look like a mountain. It should look like this. <laughs> You have to constantly educate them. And that's when that's when the team understands over time that, hey, you know, you shouldn't introduce scope creep within the middle of the sprint. Scope creep is basically when you bring work in the middle of the sprint. So when a sprint starts, there's a refinement session and there is a sprint planning session. During those two sessions, you should be completely clear on what you're going to be working in the sprint. And after that, there's nothing cannot, can be added to the sprint. Once the sprint starts and then the sprint ends, you cannot add any work to the sprint. If you do, that's called scope creep. Scope creep. Right. And you can do it, but if it's very high priority and you have to take something out of the sprint to fit that into the sprint because the team can only work so many hours, right? So that is called scope creep. And that is also a very, very uh, important thing that you have to keep in mind while doing the interview. So, yeah. So one thing uh, I think we missed on that um, velocity. Um, for those of you who don't know what velocity is, it's basically the amount of user story you deliver in a single sprint. Yeah. There's a, every, um, the sprint is two weeks in, in, a, in a, like in most of the time, but some company they have one week sprint, some may have a three or some may have one month, which is not really recommended, but just keep in mind in this two weeks, how, whatever amount of user story you deliver is called velocity It's basically the amount of work is delivered by a scrum, a scrum team. I'm sorry. Development team is called velocity. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. That's amazing. Okay. Awesome. So those are some of the metrics. Now, there are a lot more metrics like bug defects, which we cannot talk about today since we are almost out of time. I think you have to uh, do your things. It's almost like midnight there. Right. It's almost midnight here as well. And uh, But we will come back. 
this channel is going to be a single stop shop. If you are a new Scrum Master who is looking to start a new job or crack the interview, or if you're a Scrum Master who wants to learn, or you're a senior Scrum Master, or you're an agile coach, whatever role you serve, this channel is going to be a single stop shop that is going to teach you so many things in your career from Jira, uh, project management tools, uh, you know, different metrics, how to manage teams, how to manage stakeholders, everything, you name it. And this more, channel, mm. I'm sorry to cut you off today. Yeah. And most importantly, our own experience, real life experience, the yeah. what we dealt with and how we accomplished them and how we achieved them, right? Yeah. How we dealt with that certain situation that might you might not be able to find that on somewhere else. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's a, like you said, one-stop shop. Yeah, yeah. And so like the video subscribe to the channel thank you for showing so much love and uh, in the previous videos and uh, let's with that said guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you like this type of format of video instead of the previous videos you like this type of format leave it in the comments down below and if you like a different type of format we'll change the format no big deal and uh, let us know how we did and thank you so much for watching thank you for your time good luck on your journey and god bless thank you so much and wish you all the best guys thank you